the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Dear friends, today we remember yet another wonderful saint, St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. All of us are quite familiar with her because she's the one who's the cause for our whole devotion of our, for, to the Sacred Heart, Jesus, uh, a French nun who right from the beginning was very holy and through her holiness she was able to have this wonderful communication with the heart of Jesus and of course as usual she was not accepted, she was criticized, the authorities or in the church, everyone they, they thought that she was actually bluffing. It always is the case when someone says they have vision, they have direct communication with Jesus, none of us would even believe. And she also went through so much of criticisms, but eventually people understood that she was genuine because all these revelations, everyone can claim that we do, that that particular person has got revelation directly from God, but eventually it will be proved and of course, the initial criticisms are always there because otherwise each and everyone will be claiming that they have a revelation. But what directly comes from God will get established and that is what has happened to St. Margaret Mary Alacock. And she died at the age of 43, but then she attained sanctity and she had this wonderful, great gift of holiness. So much of grace she had that she could communicate directly with God, with Jesus Christ and that that is the reason why we also have this wonderful, very meaningful devotion to the Sacred Heart. For the times we fail to communicate with God, we fail to re receive His words, we fail to be in constant communion with God, let's feel sorry and ask the Lord's pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God unto you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Pour out on us, we pray, O Lord, the spirit with which you so remarkably endowed Saint Margaret Mary, so that we may come to know that love of Christ which surpasses all understanding and be utterly filled with your fullness. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. A reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the Ephesians. Chapter 1, verses 11 to 14. Brethren, in Christ we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm Let your response be, Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Ring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for the upright. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp. 
with the ten string lute sing em songs blessed the people the lord has chosen as his heritage your response for the word of the lord is faithful and all his works to be trusted the lord loves justice and right and his merciful love fills the earth blessed the people the lord has chosen as his heritage your response blessed the nation whose god is the lord the people has chosen as his heritage from the heavens the lord looks forth he sees all the children of men blessed the people the lord has chosen as his heritage your response gospel acclamation hallelujah hallelujah may your mercy fill love be upon us as we hope in you o lord hallelujah the lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint luke chapter 12 verses 1 to 7 at that time when so many thousands of the people had gathered together that they were trampling one another jesus began to say to his disciples first Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees which is hypocrisy nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known therefore whatever you have said in the dark shall be heard in the light and what you have whispered in private rooms shall be proclaimed on the house tops i tell you my friends do not fear those who kill the body and after that have nothing more that they can do but i will warn you whom to fear fear him who after he has killed has authority to cast into hell yes i tell you fear him or not five sparrows sold for two pennies and not one of them is forgotten before god why even the hairs of your head are all numbered fear not you are one of you are of more value than many sparrows the gospel of the lord dear friends in christ jesus again we have the series of uh, um text from st paul's letters letter to the ephesians though it talks about kind of a predestination it is not really dealing with predestination it is dealing with the whole understanding of church as a community and how important it is for the church to function as one family where christ dwells so much into this particular body and we need to accept and understand the importance of this whole communion and uh, very interesting passage from the gospel and this is also one of my favorite gospels for for one of the uh, reasons is this whenever i preach retreat uh, especially in novitiates and places like that i always used to give an exercise imagine you sit in a room and listen to your own friends talking ill about you talking something bad about you and you are able to listen to it of course your friends are talking without knowing that you are actually listening and just imagine that you are able to hear so loud your close friends whom you can never imagine that they can talk against you they're talking about you and you are able to listen to it so i used to give it as one of the one of the exercises during the morning meditations and interestingly enough some of them when they come for sharing they will say Uh, that they didn't even like to move forward proceed with this exercise because with the very thought that their close friends are talking ill against a particular person is very disturbing and they don't even want to proceed with that because they will get to hear a lot of disturbing information about themselves and the very fact that the close friends are discussing about that 
is itself is a problem. So it's it's uh, it's it's very interesting when when we when we get to know what our people were talking about us. That's why there is nothing called secret. Everything is revealed. Everything is known. People will come to know sometime or other. That is why. Jesus says, whatever you talk in private rooms, whatever you talk in darkness, whatever you talk in secrecy, everything will come one day. And that is why people who are completely uh, not transparent, who hide a lot of things, however they try to hide themselves within four walls or for that matter, the mobile phones that we use, you have so many patterns, so many locks, we don't want to give it to anyone else because we are so scared of giving our instruments to the others because they, they will come to know about us. So the ones who have lot of inner conflicts, those who have lot of vulnerabilities, those who make lot of mistakes will, will find it very difficult to be transparent, to be open and they don't want people to judge them. Once they come to know their vulnerabilities, people will make judgment which they don't want and that will actually create a problem for their hierarchy, it will create a problem for their reputation. This is the reason why people generally, especially those who, uh, have, those who have higher positions, those who are in the, in the, in the elite uh, positions in, in the society, it can be in the family, it can be in the church, it can be in institution, anywhere for that matter, with higher ranks people try to tend to be a little more closed with themselves. They don't want to share about themselves because they are so scared about people judging them. So you, 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 and Jesus says, you, you don't worry about people who can hurt you, who can kill you, but you be careful about those who have power to cast you into hell. And this whole hell is a concept, those days it was, it, it was um, in the Old Testament, it, it was referred to a place called Gehenna, which was situated in Kidron Valley, where people, uh, people of Israelites, those days used to sacrifice human sacrifice, the children to that God called Baal and we have this reference in the book of prophet Jeremiah as well as in the second uh, Kings, how children were burnt, children were put to death as a sacrifice. So also we see how people were burning the, the spoils and uh, all the booties, everything where whatever was uh, conquered in the war is to be also burnt. So this whole place, Gehenna was referred to a place called underworld where things were burnt. It was considered as hell and Jesus says only the evil ones have got the power to cast people into hell. So fear them. So dear friends, if we go through this, it's very clear. The simple question is why is it, why is Jesus so much upset with Pharisees? Why is he taking them, um, he's very much against and he talks about hypocrisy, talks about being very transparent, talks about all your secrets are going to come out. And then again he talks about providence. So what is the connection between hypocrisy and providence? The connection is very simple. Why are we acting like hypocrites? Why do we uh, play a double game, double standard? Very simple. We, we are planning to go high, climb up the ladder in the society but at the same time we also know we have our own contradictions, we have our own problems and we don't want that to be revealed to the others so, so that we will not be judged and, and we need to also retain our positions in the society. The moment that people come to know my weaknesses, I will be, bring, I will be brought down from the ladder. So what do I do? For the sake of climbing up the ladder, for the sake of retaining my position, retaining my authority, retaining my chair, what do I do? I try to hide things and I try to live a very compromising life, a double standard and, and, and a full of bundle of contradictions. You know Jesus, what he says, look at the sparrows, how they are taken care, are you not worth more than the sparrows, are you not worth, worth more than the, the hair that is in your head, of course I removed just yesterday. It's, it's, you are much more worth. So if I understand God takes care of me so much, he is going to give me the position, he is going to give me everything what I need, position in the sense in his, in his eyes, I will never care about the positions that the human beings are going to give me, the society that is going to give me. I will not worry about climbing up the ladder, I need not worry to retain, I will, I will not 
try to please the others to retain my position. I will only try to please God. And once I know God is going to take care of me absolutely without any difficulty, is going to take me to great heights, why my dear friends, we would be acting weird, we would be hiding our own vulnerabilities and try to put a show in front of the society. All that we do, all our hypocrisy, even the Pharisees, Sadducees for that matter, was only to please people and to retain their position. But if I know for sure God is going to take care of me, is going to give me great places and we have to please only him, if I, if I have the trust and confidence in his providence, would we care about the positions that the society is going to give me, the recognition, the appreciation that the people are going to give me, we will not care about it. And that is the crux of the text today. Let us, let us trust in God 100%. He is there to provide completely for us and he will take us to greater heights. Why should we worry about pleasing people, pleasing human beings? The moment I start pleasing people, I enter into compromise. The compromise will lead to so much of secrecy, trying to hide myself without accepting my own vulnerabilities and weakness. Eventually, we will become completely arrogant, prideful and full of bundle of contradiction and end up not in his house but in Gehenna, the hell full of fire. Let us pray. O Lord God, in the face of death we have begun to understand and feel for lesser forms that cannot defend or protect themselves. We are gradually waking up to the reality the whole earth is one family. O Lord Jesus, give us the grace to bury all our differences and to act and think like one big family, to make choices for the greater good of humanity. This we ask for your love's sake. Amen. Blessed story, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed for the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of a providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. 
and so with the, all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spreads throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and George Anthony, Sam, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you, Throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. For the service command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Or lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church. Graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Be
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us understand what's in Bernard states. The meditations on each mystery should be read aloud while others listen carefully. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you make us sharers of his divine nature who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.